So now we have defined a sheaf, namely the sheaf of regular functions on our algebraic set. And a topological space with a sheaf of rings uh, defined over it has a name, namely a ringed space. So a ringed space is a topological space X together with a sheaf of rings that is called the structure sheaf. So this means that we have for each open set U a ring and for each inclusion a ring homomorphism. And they should satisfy the basic pre-sheaf properties and the gluing property, the sheaf property. And if the uh, structure sheaf is clear from context, we will refer to this just by the letter X, and it will be understood what the structure sheaf is. So, for example, an algebraic set is a ringed space. And when we consider al our algebraic sets as ringed spaces, we always take the structure sheaf to be the sheaf of regular functions. So we just write x and then we mean that x is x of x with ox the structure sheaf. Also, if you have any ringed space and you have an open subset, the open subset is a ringed space in its own right. And so what will be the structure sheaf? It's the restriction of the structure sheaf on the, uh, onto the, the set U. So what does this mean? Well, uh, to define uh, the restriction, we will define the restriction of a pre-sheaf. So if you have a pre-sheaf on X, the restriction to U is the pre-sheaf that assigns to each open set of u what your original sheaf would have assigned. So an open set of u is an open set in x in particular and so f of v is well defined and you take this to be the uh, ring associated to v with respect to this restriction. So very natural thing. And the restriction homomorphisms, the restriction maps are the same as you had for the big sheaf, the big pre-sheaf. And one can show that if the uh, pre-sheaf F is a sheaf, so if it satisfies the gluing property, well, then uh, a fortiori it will satisfy the gluing property for subsets of U, so the restriction is a sheaf in that case. So our goal is to define affine varieties, so we're very close to the definition of an affine variety. We basically want to say that anything of the form x o x where x is an algebraic set and o of x is the sheaf of regular functions we want to say that any such thing is an affine variety but what does such thing mean well the proper way to say it is that any ringed space that is isomorphic as a ringed space to this thing we have seen for algebraic sets, this is what is an affine variety. But to do this we have to understand what it means to be isomorphic for ringed spaces. And we can do this in greater generality than we will. We can do this for any ringed spaces, but then the definitions will be complicated and not so intuitive. So we will not look at all possible sheaves, but just as the ones that will be of interest to us. Namely, from now on, whenever we uh, see the word sheaf on a topological space, we assume that it is a sheaf of k-valued functions on this space. What does this mean? So k is our once and for all fixed algebraically closed field that we always work over. And what we mean is that this f of u should not be any 
arbitrary ring, it should be a subring of the ring of all functions from u to k with pointwise addition and pointwise multiplication. So our uh, the sections of our sheaf, the uh, elements of this f of u should be honest functions. So now we can define morphisms of ringed spaces. So what do we want to do? We have two ringed spaces, um, x o x and y o y. So x is a topological space, o x is a sheaf of rings, so a sheaf of uh, function rings on this topological space, and same with y. And we want to uh, define what it means to have a function from this thing to that thing. So uh, this should be, before we do the proper definition, what do we want from such a function? We want it to be a function from the set x to the set y that behaves reasonably both with respect to the topology of x and y and with respect to these rings. So, okay, let's take a closer look at this. So if you have a continuous map of topological spaces and you have a subset u of y, so you have here y and here x. And in y, you have this set u. And so a function from u to k is given, phi. And you also have this f from x to y, so you can look at the pre-image of this f inverse of u, and you get the composition of uh, phi with f, and this is called the pullback of phi along f. So it's the function from the pre-image of u under f to k, defined by composing f with phi. And so this way you get a ring homomorphism from the ring of all functions defined on your u to the ring of all functions defined on f inverse of u. Now let's take the algebraic structure of the structure sheaves into account. So a morphism of ringed spaces is a continuous map, so it behaves well with respect to the topology, such that for each open subset u of y, the pullback of any regular function on u is a regular function on f inverse of u. Why is this well defined? Well, because our function is continuous, this is the preimage of an open set, so this will be open. And so this makes sense. And this, what does this mean? This means that the pullback of phi should not just be some arbitrary function on f inverse of u, it should be a regular function on f inverse of u, meaning that it should be a section of the structure sheaf of x. And this defines for us a ring homomorphism from O y of u to O x of f inverse of u. It's a ring homomorphism because the uh, so so why does this, for example, respect addition? Well, what does f star of phi plus psi mean? Well, so this is uh, the composition of uh, phi plus psi with f. And the addition is pointwise, so this is phi f of x plus psi f of x. And this is exactly phi composed f. So this is the, what I mean here is, I'm, I'm writing sloppily, this is an element, but I mean is the function that maps x to this thing. And this is precisely the function uh, phi uh, composed with f, psi composed with f. So this is indeed 
f star applied to phi plus f star applied to psi. So the map is additive and you can do the same with the product. So it's a homomorphism. And now finally, we can define f varieties. So now that we have defined homomorphism, we can define isomorphism. So an isomorphism of ringed spaces is a homomorphism of ringed spaces that has a two-sided inverse. So this means that you have f from x to y, it should have f inverse, such that f inverse also satisfies the property of being a morphism of ringed spaces. So this compatibility with the sheaves, the structure sheaves, should be there for f inverse as well. And as a map, f inverse is the inverse of the map f set theoretical. And finally now, an affine variety is a ring space that is isomorphic to the ring space of an algebraic set X. So in other words, an affine variety is up to isomorphism, an algebraic set X and its structure sheaf O. X, the structure sheaf of regular functions. And so let's pause and think what this means. This means that we have defined affine varieties in this intrinsic way, that it is just some topological space with some uh, she structure sheaf independent of any embedding into anything, but such that there exists an algebraic set uh, inside some affine space that is, whose ringed space is isomorphic to our ringed space. This is a much more flexible framework that will allow us not only to delve deeper into the structure of affine varieties, but also later when we talk about general algebraic varieties it will be a small step from this intrinsic and proper definition of affine varieties. That will be a topic for later lectures, and I suggest that you go through this lecture again and prove all the statements that were made about sheaves and pre-sheaves.